I tested Casper's strategy and finished with a 25% win rate and lost 3k on it. However, you might not believe me, but using only one confluence, I was able to transform the strategy and make it a 75% win rate with a return of 6.5k using data science and my knowledge in AI. I'm money engineer and with my masters in machine learning, I've helped traders get funded and get payouts using data science. Out of all my experiments in this channel, I think this was the most impressive, so I can't wait to dive into it. So in this video, I'll give you a quick breakdown of Casper's SMC strategy and how it works. We'll also see how a perfect trade looks like using recent price action and we'll be using data science to optimize this strategy. And finally, you'll be in a much better place to understand how I was able to literally transform this losing strategy into a very profitable one. So first thing first for Black Friday, I just opened up some spots to our community and you can get 30% off using this code. I promise you that your price will never get lower than that. It might just increase. It's a lifetime mentorship. You get a one-on-one -on -one live call with me and with all the data science tools you get access to, there's no way it will get cheaper than this. So let's cover the strategy. Casper SMC is known for having a big library of strategies. So I took one of the simplest I could find in his channel. And it's all about using the server bullet on Nasdaq. So in here, I'm on Nasdaq. As always, I never go back five years ago and cherry pick my trades. I always go into recent price action, either last week or two weeks ago at the time of recording. So in here, I'm on Tuesday. And all I have to do is wait for 10 a.m. and look for the first fair value gap, which is formed at that time. So let's look. In here, we're at 9.30. So let's just wait for 10 a.m. So we have a fair value gap right there. And all you have to do, based on his strategy at least, is just enter on the fair value gap, cover the stop loss at the first candle of the fair value gap formation, which is a three candle formation, and then go for a one to two. That's it. So I was very surprised by this strategy. Like, that's so simple. There's no bias. There's no break of structure required, even though we got some break of structure right there. We did get a sweep of liquidity right there. We swept the high of the London session and we also swept the high of the Asian session. However, those are not required by this strategy. So I was very, very surprised to hear that and just wanted to test it out because if this is actually a profitable strategy, it could be something that could be implemented very easily. So let's just see how this one goes. So we got the entry right there. You can see price went up. All right, so this trade is an example where everything works perfectly. So that was a great example right there. So now what I'm going to do is I'll go back into previous day and back test around two weeks of price action. So as always, what I'm doing in this channel is just proof of concept. I'm sorry, but I don't have time to back test 300 trades every time I'm doing a video. So I'm just going to back test the last two weeks and see what we can learn from that. Because this is where you should come in and then do your own back test and your own journaling. What I'm doing here is just providing some ideas, some direction and guiding you on how to best optimize your own strategy. So let me backtest the strategy and then I'll be back. So I just finished my backtesting. So I have here around two weeks of data, which gave around 12 trades. So as I said, the results were pretty bad, but let's look at the data. So to look at the data, you will need a trading journal. In here, I'm using the Notion template that every member has access to, and that's able to give us data science analysis, not just very simple entries like all these other notion templates so and here i have all the different features you can study in your journal as i explained in my channel you can watch my other videos for that i'm studying different features a feature is one specific characteristic of your trading strategy and it needs to be objective by being objective you can then study if it's a detriment to your strategy or if it's boosting the profitability of your trading strategy for instance, a simple one that we studied in the past was the presence of a fair value gap at different time frames. But there are millions that you can study and those are multiple ones we've been studying in our group. So let's look at the data for now. As I said, I've been backtesting the last two weeks. I even actually went three weeks prior. I backtested the end of October and then also the beginning of November. And you can see that I had around one trade per day because I always took the first fair value gap that appeared at 10 a.m. And you can see that most of the days were unprofitable. I had some good trades, but most of them were losing trades. And this gave me a win rate of 25%, which is actually very, very bad. And also a return of minus 3%. So that's very bad. However, 
And this is thanks to a trading journal. And this is why I've been preaching data science and trading journal to all of the traders. This is what I learned while I was working in private equity is that you need to look at the data. There is no way that you can learn all of this without using those type of tools. So I was able to find one simple rule. And this is thanks to my experience. I was able to find one specific feature that when I applied it, I was able to go from a 25% win rate with a return of minus 3R to a 75% win rate with a return of 6.5R. So what is this feature? I'll show you. It is by implementing a daily bias, but not any daily bias, a mechanical daily bias, which is very difficult to do most of the time. And look at the results here. If you're going against my mechanical bias, you will get a 0% win rate. But if you follow my mechanical bias, you will be able to get a return of 5R. And if on top of that, you apply a 2.5R return instead of the specific 2R, you can get a 6.5R in return with a 75% win rate. So what happened there? If we go back to the calendar, so your goal when you're seeing this type of data is to try to filter out all of the losses while also keeping your wins, of course. And this is what I was able to do with this mechanical daily bias. So now the question, of course, is what is this daily bias? Well, let's just look at an example. You probably heard about the concept of using the midnight time as a reference point and also using the 830 open as a reference point. So for the people who are not familiar with that, I think that's another ICT concept. And what he said is by using the New York Midnight Open gives us a reference point to use to get a premium or discount on price. So based on this theory, if you're buying below the New York Midnight Open, you're getting a good price for your trade. And when you're selling above the New York Midnight Open, you're getting also a good price. So you don't want to be buying above the New York Midnight Open and you don't want to be selling below this New York Midnight Open. So just using that, I think that's something you should definitely study for yourself. You can see that, for instance, today's example, I would not be allowed to enter this trade. However, this is not how I've been using my daily bias. I've been using my daily bias using two different reference points. Because my goal was to determine in an objective and mechanical way if we're currently in a bullish environment or in a bearish environment. Of course, there's one thing you can do is you can try to use different highs and lows, right? So let's say we come back at that point. At this point in price, you can say that we're overall pretty bullish. So we have this low, we have this high, we formed another low right there, and we have this new high. So we're currently very bullish. However, there's always an issue with that because sometimes we can be consolidating I know a lot of my students told me that they have problems identifying specifically if we're currently in a bearish or bullish direction because this is only on the five minute. But what if you go on the 15 minute? Are we still currently in this same environment? Because if we start here, you can see that overall we're pretty bearish at that point, but we just broke out this high at that point where we are. So you know that it can be difficult. Another solution could be something like using fractals. So we saw that in one of my previous video. This could be useful, but even there, you can see that we had this high that was broken at that point. Then we formed this low and now we're currently bullish. So one person could come in and then say that we're currently bearish and then the other person could say that we're bullish. So to try to reduce those kind of interrogation because those are the psychological problems that come in in trading, there's always something for your trade and something against your trade. And when you start overthinking your trades and when you don't have specific and mechanical rules in your trading, which are very objective, this is when you get into overthinking. And once you lose the trade, you get into the fear of missing out. So that's a whole slope right there. And, and that's what's causing a lot of issues for traders. So what have we focus on in our trading community is objective features and objective confluences in our trading. So the way I'm using the mechanical bias is I will get right at the beginning of the 930 open, right at the equity open. There's a lot of volatility, but especially manipulations happening at the beginning of the 930 open. I know a lot of people, me included, I try to not trade the first minutes or even the first 15 minutes around the 930 open. It's made to trick traders and to get their stop losses and then try to mess up their analysis. So what I did here is I would just get at the beginning of the 930 open and compare those two points, compare the New York midnight open with the 930 open, which is right there. Since the New York midnight open is lower 
than the 9.30 open or you can just say that the 9.30 open is higher than the New York Midnight open, I would consider myself in a bullish environment. And if you think about it, it just makes sense because let's say if price was just going up and up and up since the New York Midnight open, then of course we're currently above the New York Midnight open and we're currently in a bullish environment. But I know it can be tricky if we're in a consolidating environment. But even with those cases, surprisingly, at least based on this small sample size, I saw some pretty good results and I showed you I was able to remove 8 of my losses using just this specific rule. So for instance, because the 930 open is higher than the New York Midnight open, I would only be allowed to buy. So this specific trade would not be allowed to be taken. And you can see that this one eventually went for a stop loss. So I applied this rule to all of my data and this is how I was able to go from a 25% win rate to a 75% win rate. And this is something that could not be achieved without first the knowledge of turning your strategy into specific features, but also without a trading in general. So if we look also at this example, let me go back to the 930. This is 930. So I have my two points, midnight to 9.30, daily bias, overall bearish, so I'm allowed to take this trade. And you can see that this one is actually the trade example that I covered. So let me find another one. Another one where I was able to save myself a trade. So I'm coming here, New York, the 9.30 open, where is it? Is right there, overall bearish. And you can see that it's pretty representative of what happened during the session. So we got the open at midnight. The London session was consolidating. Then we had the New York AM session from 7 AM to 9.30 AM, which was very bullish. Then at that point, which is the open, where is the open? The open is right there. And then we stayed very bullish the entire day. And you can see this is the reason why this trade was a successful trade. And those are the type of features that you need in your trading that can make the entire difference between being a break-even trader or even an unprofitable trader to a profitable trader. So once again, if you want to join, right now is the best time to join because price will never get lower than this. And we're always looking for new talents in our community. So I hope I was able to give you some value today. And if you want to look at my trade of the week, where every week I present a new trade, you can just click on this video right there.